Oh, oh. Saw so low. That was scary, guys. I'm scared. Alrighty, YouTube. Welcome back to another video. So, last weekend I was away overseas for my uh, birthday, and so here we are back now. I am actually very backlogged on review videos, so I'm gonna film a lot of them today and just edit them over time. Also, at the time of recording this video, we are five subs. All right, five subs away from 1,000. So we've almost hit the goal because at 1,000 and uh, 4,000 hours watched, we can start to apply for YouTube partnership and monetization, which means that we can start earning things from videos. And that means I can buy more things and make more reviews. Hopefully we can get there with this video. So today we're here to talk about the new Vanser Gemini Caster and the Gemini Pollux. So I actually previously had this Pollux. This is not even the final release version, but I never did the review for it. Big thanks to Osmodshop and Vanser for providing these uh, review units, which I will be sending back to them for after this video. It's the first time Osmodshop has offered me to review things, and I hope we can continue that in the future. No need to introduce Vanser too much. They are a Chinese company. They've been around for a while now, and the main product that they've made, which has gathered them attention, was Grexta, which is essentially a Final Mouse clone that was heavier at the time, but not everyone was able to get a Final Mouse, so people did go for the Grexta instead. And now they have released the Gemini Caster and the Gemini Pollux. So Caster is the symmetrical one here, and the Pollux is the Ergo Mouse. So we'll move on to the details, features, and unboxing. Both of these mice cost 170 Australian dollars or 110 US dollars. They also come in quite a few colorways if you go have a look on their website. They all weigh in at 55 grams with a uh, unit variation, of course. They use a standard 3395 sensor, TTC gold switches, and heaps of accessories come in the box. Now, I actually do quite like this unboxing experience. So it would start with a lid on top of the box, and then as you peel open the tape here, oh, by the way, they have a nice little enjoy it on the top as well. I love this packaging. It just unfolds like this, and it's very premium. Also, they have a hey with all these whys. And you know, as the meme we always say, like the more whys someone texts you when they say hey, the more interested in you they are. And that's why my pronouns is he, because no one ever texts me with all these whys. And you unfold the box and then you just get greeted with the mouse. So here is another Polux. This was the Polux I had before that I never made a review for. And here is the actual release model. Also, when you first open the box, you get granted with this Vanser card and I actually had a read of this card. Uh, it's exactly the same as what's written on their about website. You guys can go have a read of that. And basically it's just the founder Acker giving you guys a little introduction about themselves. And I quite like this because this is a lot more personal than what other companies try to do. They just say, hey, you know, why the fuck do I need to be so formal? I'm just gonna write whatever I want to. And so that gets my respect. Now, another thing that Vanser has done is they give you a lot of different uh, accessories to go with the mouse. So the mouse would come with a spare set of skates grips that I've already put on, USB-C cable, even an arm sleeve, which was surprisingly decent quality. Obviously, I'm not going to be reviewing the arm sleeve, but nonetheless, they do come with an arm sleeve. Interesting enough, this time, the USB receiver is here, and it is an LED screen as well, telling you battery percentage, your polling rate, and your DPI. So, nice little cool feature to have here. Doesn't really do much, but nonetheless, it's pretty cool, and I like that. On the contrary, in the pre-release model, we actually still had a USB receiver that comes into this slot here. And that is also one thing that they kind of messed up, in my opinion, on the newer releases, because you no longer have that USB, but they didn't remove this USB slot that would have been printed here for the 3D printing. So they didn't make big skates and they just left it here, even though this isn't even a slot you can open. It's the same on both mice. So that's really questionable, but we can talk more about that later. Jumping straight into the build quality, All right? Build quality on the mice is fine. No squeaking, no creaking, nothing like that. And it's a full solid shell all the way through. So build quality is pretty good. Nothing to complain about, nothing special to mention. It's not an XM2WE kind of end game gear build quality, but it's also not a terrible, it's gonna break any time quality. It's just the industry standard these days. In terms of grips and coding, the mice do have a coding and the coding is actually surprisingly all right. So I personally would still put grips on it, but nonetheless, I think this is good enough for most of you out there. It definitely does not feel like cheap plastic pieces like some brands make, for example, or the Razer mice, or even the ROG Harp Ace that felt like absolute shit without grips. Uh, so if you guys have those, make sure you get grips. Um, I would put grips on these, but it'll be fine without them. The sensor is a standard 3395 sensor, works like a charm. Sensor placement on the caster here is actually really good. 
I was quite surprised by that. It's one of the better sensor placements if you try the actual mouse. Now, as for the Poluxes here, I really cannot comment on this uh, sensor placement due to shape being a factor too because of the way I have to grip this mouse. So I'll talk more about this in the shape section, but essentially for my use at least, the sensor placement on the Polux is the most horrendous sensor placement I have ever tried on any mice. So for you it might be different, but that's just for me because of the way I have to hold the mouse. So the clicks are using TTZ Golds. They're very light, but feel very mushy and terrible to click down on. Uh, especially if you press it towards the front. If you press it towards the back, it's a bit okay, but I mean, no one's really gonna press it this far back, are they? Unless you're hard finger tipping their mouse. And that doesn't really change with any of these mice, right? All of, all of these ones that they've made here. I don't use side buttons, but the side buttons feel even worse. This is really not satisfying to click down on. And if side button is something you care about, then you might wanna just avoid this mouse purely because of the side buttons. They should've went with blue shell pink dots, but oh well. Clicks themselves don't actually affect gameplay. So even though they're mushing terrible clicks, I say, it makes no difference during gameplay. And that was proven when I used the first batch plagued Pulsar X2s, the white one, which I made the original review using. And those clicks were absolutely terrible. But during gameplay, you don't notice those things. You just click when you need to, you shoot when you need to. And I still performed. And so this was the same. Even though the clicks sucked, I still played well. So there's no problem in that. Weight distribution is good on both mice. I swear it feels a bit better balanced on the Polux even compared to the caster here. The caster might be like 2% heavier towards the back. Like it's, I could just be placeboing because the mouse doesn't really rotate when I'm holding it towards the middle either. Normally if it's like badly distributed, it'll start doing like a little drop off like that. But when I hold it towards the middle, there is no difference. However, I swear the back feels a tiny bit heavier. Generally speaking though, the weight distribution is perfectly fine. In terms of skates, I think the stock Vance skates glide fine but they are a bit thin and that's kind of what most skates these days are like. I really do wish they made these a bit thicker. So on a softer pad, it definitely feels like sometimes the base plate can start touching the uh, bottom of the pad. So if you listen to that, that's not usually how skates would sound on a mouse pad. I just think you should just buy core pads. So skate designs, however, is pretty good. So the front design here, I'm a fan of. It's got a good shape and it's got a good sizing. Could be a tiny bit bigger, but definitely not smaller. So the front skate is fine. The back skates get the job done as well, but I do not know why they left the uh, design groove for the USB receiver when they decided they're not even going to use a USB receiver. They should just made this one big skate and joint it all up. That would have been much better. I honestly think it might even be good if they just released like a square skate that we can fill in this gap using. But nonetheless, that's just a personal gripe. There is literally nothing wrong with the skates here. The skate design is actually really good. So if you do plan to get this mouse, you might as well just buy the core pad set of skates and grips together to come with. So now we'll move on to shape. We'll start with the caster. I've been talking about the caster the whole time. We'll talk about the caster. So the caster is essentially a Starlight 12 medium clone. And there's really nothing more I can say here in terms of shape other than that, right? I've previously reviewed the Starlight 12. So if you guys are curious and want more detail, you can go watch that. Uh, this is the Starlight 12 medium size clone, by the way. It's essentially a unique low profile shape suitable for fingertip or claw grip if you have small to medium sized hands. Now, large hands definitely avoid. So I personally really struggle to use this now. I don't know how I mained a Starlight 12 for like a year, uh, especially during pro play, but it just so happened that was the case. So now I get forced into a super aggressive claw if I want to use this mouse because only then can I get palm contact. Otherwise, during my relaxed claw, my fingers will already be off the mouse. So instead, to get back palm contact, I need to curl these in quite a bit and I'm no longer an aggressive claw, so I don't like that. That's just a hand size problem and also a height problem on the mouse. But nonetheless, if the shape can work for you, I do think this shape is quite magical. Like if it works, it definitely does work really well. And you guys should look into this as a Starlight 12 alternative. Now, as for the Polux here, we can all see that it's an Ergo. However, this mouse is honestly designed for baby hands. And by baby hands, I mean even the Zowie EC3 sizing is still bigger than this thing. So you really do need tiny, tiny hands for this to be an Ergo shape that you can use. And I genuinely cannot even give it like a proper review because my hands are just too big. It just doesn't fit me at all. So that's also the thing I was talking about in terms of sensor placement. So for me to use this mouse, I need to bring it back down so far, so low and turn it into a claw grip because there's no way I can palm this. And there's no way I'm like finger tipping an ergo mouse like this, especially when it's got this big back and small front. So I have to bring it in so much to use it. 
that by the time I'm comfortably using the mouse, the sensor placement is so far down my hand that it's just completely off the X, Y axis. So every time I use this mouse and I do a rightwards horizontal swipe, right? My, cat, my, my screen does not move flat. It's supposed to be a right 90 degrees, but my crosshair and my movements in game look like this. It looks like I went like diagonally down towards the bottom right instead, but that's not supposed to happen. And that is honestly just because I've pushed the sensor down my hand so much in order to make this mouse comfortably fit onto me. So that deviation just means I cannot use this mouse properly. However, in terms of shape, objectively speaking, it's actually a quite a good ergo. The right side of the mouse here is very well designed. It comfortably slopes down for you. And honestly, I find this quite enjoyable. Like this is a really nicely designed slopage on the right side of the mouse here for you to sit your palm on. The problem is here on the left, this is aggressively curved in and you can really feel this edge here because the mouse is curved where your thumbs are, but this part flares out and you can really feel this aggressive edge more so than any of the other ergonomic mice that I have been trying in the past. So that in itself is a problem only for me because when I rest the mouse comfortably, this part is digging straight into my thumb muscles, the meaty part here. It's because my hands are too wide. So if I had narrower hands, and or if I try to hold the mouse like this, right, I get the curve inside the palm, and then that edge is kind of like where my joint is, so there's no actual contact here, and I don't feel that joint, then this curvature is actually really nice. And then the rest of the mouse also feels really good. The only problem here is, as you can see, half my hand is off the mouse, so I can't really get that resting position for my ring and pinky finger. So the mouse needs to be wider for me. That's the main complaint. So if you had narrower hands, right? Not necessarily the shortest hands in terms of length, you need narrower hands, then this could really fit you and be a really good ergo shape because shape wise, this is actually really, really nice. So I think if you had small hands or especially the ladies out there, you guys have been looking for a small ergo mouse because I cannot think of a ergo mouse smaller than this. Right, this is probably the smallest ergo around. And if you like ergos and you have that small mouse, you've always been waiting for the x Lite Mini or whatever Mini there are, then you can give this a go. Because if you have the narrow hands, lengthwise is not a problem. You get the narrow hands that you can rest your whole palm within this area here. You get that nice slopage and you get a curvature going on here. Then this ergo shape works well. I can't give this as a proper review, but from theory, from what I think would happen, and if you had the right sized hands, this could be a really good ergo. Finally, we move on to God Mode Firmware. So the God Mode Firmware has been getting quite the debate online recently. If you guys have been following on Twitter, like all the tech reviewers and stuff have been talking about this firmware and this God Mode stuff and Vancer themselves market it as a firmware that gives you an advantage in games. They lift limitations that are set on the mice when in battery wireless mode, because as you'd expect, there will be some kind of software in program when the mouse enters that battery mode that potentially throttles the performance. That's what Vansa claim, and therefore they made this God Mode firmware. Now they also claim they're gonna make different versions of the firmware for AWPing, for rifling in CS or whatever, and I'm just like, okay, that, that's a bit of a stretch. Um, Vaxi also has their version of competitive firmware, but for us, the average consumer, none of this matters, right? All we just need to know is that if it plays better or not. I can only speak from subjective opinions. Right, I don't do any measurements. I don't have the equipment for that. I don't particularly care. So I went to watch some other reviewers as well. So in summary, the God Mode firmware does essentially nothing. If anything, these Vancer mice have some of the highest latencies, whether that's click latency or whatever latencies on the market. And latency you want as low as possible. So being really high in latency is not a good thing, right? That's not a good look for Vancer. Uh, if you go look at Howl's Gaming's video, for example, he dropped the measurements and that's where I kind of got that data from as well. So all these measurements aside though, like we play the game, do you actually notice a difference? And well, at least for me, no difference, right? I did not notice the difference between using these mice and using another 3395 mice. Uh, I didn't notice the difference between the default firmware and the gold mode firmware. I just played, hit shots I hit, missed shots I missed, and that was it. So subjectively speaking, the firmware in itself seems like a gimmick, but I also won't say that it's bad. I can't tell the difference between these latencies. If you do want an upgrade, however, in terms of that latency, that responsiveness kind of feel, just go buy a 4K polling rate mouse. I have been recently maining a 4K polling rate mouse, which I will review hopefully next weekend. And honestly, it's the biggest difference maker now. Like it's such, it's a night and day noticeable difference. And I'll have to rediscuss 4K in that video because the last time I talked about 4K was in my Razer Viper V2 Pro review. And I said 4K was noticeable, but not as much of a difference. At the time though, I was using a 240 hertz monitor and now we're on a 360 hertz monitor that you guys can't see or you can kind of see this corner here. And that 4K is completely different, right? There's a true difference in responsiveness and that 4K is definitely something I like now. 
in terms of these Vanser mice, at least, there is little to no difference between the firmware and little to no difference between this and any other 3395 mouse that uses the same polling rate uh, when you actually play with it. So who should buy this? If you wanted to try the final mouse shape without actually ever buying a final mouse, right, then the caster is for you. The Polux is for those who have tiny hands and have long waited and ergo for tiny hands, uh, especially perhaps the ladies out there. And I really can't think of an ergo that you might want that's even smaller than this, uh, especially good for those who have narrower hands, longer but narrower hands, more so than if you had wide and shorter hands, right? The width part is definitely the bigger contributor. The length is less relevant in this case. And so once again, I'd like to thank Oz Mod Shop and Vanser for giving me this review opportunity. Uh, I've kept everything truthful, as you guys know. Normally I say a lot of good things, but this one wasn't particularly the most positive review. And well, I hope Vanser can continue to work and improve on their future products. And I also hope Oz Mod Shop sends me more stuff to review. But yeah, that will be the end of this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one.